So, hello everyone. So, we will continue with the topic yarn hairiness and now we will discuss different techniques of uh, measurement of yarn hairiness. As we have discussed in last class that the techniques there are basically two different techniques are there. One is uh, measurement of yarn hairiness by number of hairs beyond certain specified length and another technique is that measurement of total number of total length of hairs beyond certain length. Okay. So, that both these methods they have their positive points and negative points this detailed we have discussed in last class. Now, we will discuss uh, the exact measurement technique first is that Shardley yarn hairiness tester. Okay. Here we actually measure the we count the number of hairs longer than a pre selected length between 0 to 10 millimeter and usually if we see it is a 3 millimeter. Okay. Now, suppose this is yarn here we have different length now what we want we want to measure the length of number of hairs so these are in on the both sides we want to measure suppose this one is the length 3 millimeter so, it will count whatever num whichever hairs are more than the 3 millimeter length say 3 millimeter. So, this will keep on counting this is a 1 it will count 2, 3 this will be not be counted 4 say of, of it will not be counted 5 this is just below 6, 7 not counted 8 9 not counted 10 11 in this way. So, it will keep on counting the number of hairs per unit length suppose this is suppose 50 meter 50 meter length of yarn has been passed. So, it will the there will be photo sensor this will count now the condition that situation here it is it will only count the hairs which is beyond 3 millimeter and yarn is not one dimension or two dimensional uh, material it is a 3 d material it is a so almost if we see circular in cross section suppose if we um, uh, draw this yarn cross section this is a cross section this is yarn cross section this same yarn is cross section. Now, the hairs are like this. So, hairs are not in a particular direction. This is actually these hairs are covering the entire surface. Now, what is happening here? this sensor here photo sensor it actually sends only from one point not even surface only from one point suppose this is a sensor it is placed beyond 3 millimeter suppose the here it is a 3 millimeter sensor. Now, this sensor is only sensing whatever here the yarn is actually moving in this fashion this is the movement yarn movement direction yarn's direction okay so in this picture only this hair or this hair or may, maybe this these three hairs will be counted okay and if there is some smaller hair here this will not be counted that's actually we want but these three hairs are counted 
the signal will be the number of hairs will be 3, but actually there are large number of hairs. Even this hair will not be counted because this is not coming in the that range. Okay. So, that means is it giving the correct result. So, the count what we are getting say say 100 hairs per per say meter or 1000 hairs per meter whatever may be the count. Are we getting the exact count of the hair number of hair? No, we are not getting. We are getting the indication of hairs with an assumption that the hairs are actually covered uniformly throughout the yarn surface. Okay. Same we will see same is the case of the if we want to measure the fiber hair length. Okay. So, this is the here one should not get confused that this gives the total number of hairs, it is not the total number of hairs, it is the hair only within this zone, only within this zone and rest hairs are not counted, but the condition that that actually for comparison or for some grading this is enough, okay. because with the assumption that the hairs are uniformly distributed throughout the surface. Okay. Now, so in Shirley Herring's tester what we do here it is not usually it measure the hairs beyond whatever the length the more than 3 millimeter it counts the number of hairs, okay. but it another set it can actually be better. There is a two set of rollers are there, one is a fixed roller which is fixed at the 3 millimeter the length beyond the yarn surface. Another one it is a variable which varies from 0 millimeter 0 to say 10 millimeter maximum 10 millimeter and it counts the number of hairs. So, it consists of a light beam shining on a small diameter photo receptors opposite to it. So, in that picture what we have seen here there will be one light source. So, if suppose it is a light source is there light source is there. So, this light source and in other side there will be photo receptors this photo receptor will actually get the signal. Okay. Now, while the yarn is moving suppose there is no here, here this light totally it will reach to the photo receptor, but in case of hairs coming in between. So, that obstruction will give indication that there is only one hair. Okay. Now, the another problem here is that so very high density hair concentration in that case if there are two hairs coming together this may give signal of one hair, but in any case this gives rough idea about the number of hairs. Okay. So, the light beam it consists of light beam and a photoreceptor of small diameter light beam. So, yarn under test is run between the light and the photoreceptors when it is moving the the hairs pass between the light and receptor the light beam momentarily broken okay, and the electronic circuit counts the interruption it counts the number of interruption. So, as one hair. So, if it is interrupted once may be by single hair or may be a cluster of hair it will be counted as one hair. Okay. So, that one hair only the hairs within the aperture are counted if it is below if it is beyond that aperture as I have mentioned. So, because the hairs yarns are covered with the total hairs throughout the surface 
because total number of hairs is proportional to this count. Okay. Now, this is the instrument here we have two yarn paths this yarn path at the bottom it is a called the fixed yarn path. So, here the yarn will uh, move and this is the guide and here this is the aperture distance where light passes through that and the distance between this aperture and this guide it is fixed here it is a 3 millimeter. Now, the 3 millimeter distance that may vary depending on the diameter of the yarn. Okay. So, that it has to be initially it has to be actually um, uh, set first okay, calibrated that initial initial distance based on the uh, based on the, the diameter of the yarn. So, for coarser count yarn we have to move this guide little bit further away. So, that the outer surface this top surface of yarn and this uh, aperture this distance remains 3 millimeter. And as the yarn moves in this direction from left to right. So, this hairs will be actually will get give obstruction here in the light beam and it will this will be counted. Now, if we want to measure the hairiness other than the 3 millimeter we have to select the variable path where another guide roller is there, but which is movable guide roller. here it is a fixed guide roller this guide roller is movable and it is between so 0 and we can set at anything between 0 to anywhere between 0 to say 10 millimeter. So, that if we if we want a higher length of hair want to measure. So, we will shift this guide roller little bit above this. So, that will take care of the now let us see the uh, animation here. Now, it is a fixed path that means well, now it is a moving the yarn is moving now now it is a one obstruction two obstruction three four five and it is not this one is not obstructing five six those obstruction are coming under this uh, aperture are counted, okay. but it is it is uh, you can see that this is not counting the uh, hairs below or in other side. So, this this counter so for certain length it has count it is a 19. So, 19 hairs that, that is are more than 3 millimeter of length okay. that actually gives us a idea about the hairiness. Okay. Now, now we will use the the variable path. Okay. This is a variable path for different a. So, like, like 10 millimeter we are we are we want to measure number of hairs beyond 10 millimeter this is one only one hair uh, this one will be counted now it is it is moving uh, rest other are now it is 2 now this one will be counted only it is uh, 3. So, in this way this one will be counted this is 4 that means there are 4 hairs 4 hairs beyond 10 millimeter length. So, that way we can get fair idea about the length of hair and also the number of hair. Okay. Now, we have uh, shifted it to another distance it is a 9 millimeter. Now, same yarn if we pass so accordingly we will get different count. So, earlier it was a 4 hairs beyond 9 uh, 10 millimeter now we are fine we are uh, we can observe it is a it is basically around say 6 hairs beyond this. Okay. So, in this way we can we can get uh, the detailed idea about the number of hair and length of the hair distribution. Okay. Now, it has been shifted to another length so, say 8 millimeter. So, for 8 millimeter again we can test. So, this way this this variable length works. Okay. So, it is counting the hairs beyond that. So, same uh, yarn we are passing again. So, it gives the idea it is a it is a 7 say 8 okay, 9 10 it will give say 10 hairs okay, 10 hairs. Okay. 
now if we can see it is an 8 millimeter now we are we are we have shifted uh, little bit more 7. So, it should be more than that ok. So, that way we will get total distribution in the hairiness, but here we cannot test more than one setting at a time here we have to change the setting we have only one setting at a time we have to take ok. So, 7 milli millimeter it is a giving 11 say 12 13 will be it will be 12 and 13 it is there ok. Now, if we say uh, now that is the end of this. So, we can we can test at other 6 millimeter 5 millimeter 4 millimeter in that way we will get the result ok. Now, now this yarn hairiness tester it has got two sets of guide yarn guides that we have discussed lower set leads the yarn over a guide at a fixed distance 3 millimeter from the receptor, because uh, the guide roller actually set the distance. The upper set it leads the yarn guide actually it is a it is a movable ok at different distance from the receptor ok between 1 millimeter to 10 millimeter ok. The total number of hairs in a fixed length of yarn is counted ok. So, for say fixed length say 100 meter yarn for 100 meter we can count the total number of hairs ok. And if we know the speed of testing and if we know the count time, so we can calculate the number of hairs per unit length. The next method is that it is a Zweigel hairiness tester. Now, the its principle is exactly same as the Shirley hairiness tester, but the main problem with the Shirley hairiness tester we can get the data one hairiness one particular set of hairiness at a time ok. If we want to test 3 millimeter and beyond number of hairs of length 3 millimeter and more then we have one test we have to have one test. Then if we want to have say 4 millimeter 5 millimeter then we have to have repeated testing, but this method uh, gives the total range of hairiness length. It also it measures uh, like Sarli hairiness tester it measures the length of hairs ok. So, the aperture counts the number of hairs at a distance from 1 to 25 millimeter from the yarn edge ok. Suppose this is the yarn edge and there are hairs. at different. So, in this in suddenly what we have observed there is only one that uh, photoreceptor ok, but here we have number of photoreceptor typically 12 photoreceptors are there of different length from 1 millimeter to 25 millimeter and they get signal simultaneously. And totally at in one go one test we can get the total distribution of number of hairs of different length ok, different projected length. Now, the measuring principle as I have mentioned it is exactly same as the it is a similar to a Shirley instrument and here we have total 12 sets. So, there are set of photo cells ok, here typically it is a 12 at different distance from the yarn surface 1 millimeter 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 15, 18, 21 and 25 okay, millimeter from the yarn and that initial setting we can do by proper initial adjustment. Now, this is the animation and the picture it shows that here we have different photo sensor this is a photo sensor and here when yarn moves similar to that of Sarli hairiness tester this also record the, the number of hairs ok. Now, you can see here now yarn is moving 
Now, counter has started at different then 2 millimeter, 4 millimeter, 6 millimeter like that okay. and this is giving result number of hairs. So, it is exactly in the same way, but we are getting all the data at a time. Okay. So, and here this is actually cumulative total this one will give us the total idea of the number of hairs beyond that length. Okay. So, so there are that means it is a there are 27 hairs beyond 2 millimeter, 24 hairs beyond say 4 millimeter. So, between 22 uh, to 4 millimeter if we want to measure it there uh, we can also measure we just by subtracting. So, this gives the total idea overall idea of the length of the hair which is very important because it is the length of the hair which is very important and it is the number of hairs number and length of hair and it is a it gives the total distribution okay. and in this method the yarn is illuminated from the opposite side of the photocell and as the yarn runs past the measuring station the hairs cut the uh, light off momentarily exactly same as the uh, Sarli hairiness tester. The instrument measures the total number of hairs in each category for the set of tests and uh, typically the fixed speed is kept it is a 50 meters per minute that is important. If I, if I have already discussed if we increase or decrease the speed then it is not comparable. Okay. Now, let us see this is the yarn suppose this yarn if it is running at say 50 meter per minute 50 meter per minute this yarn will give certain result and 50 meter per minute it is uh, it is sufficiently high for ha to have quick test and sufficiently low so that the yarn the the hairs doesn't get distorted okay but suppose i want to finish my test quickly i have increased to 500 meter per minute the thing will be that the this hairs will be due to the air drag i have mentioned this will try to have different orientation and this will give entirely different result. That is why this uh, the, the speed in this instrument is specified. If we change the speed total hairiness reading will be different for same same yarn. So, that is why it is recommended we must uh, run the uh, yarn at a specified speed. Okay. So, that if we change the speed we can get altogether different result. So, the 0 point it is important, it is important not only for this also, but uh, for the uh, Sarli hairiness tester 0 point setting is important that is the, the position of the yarn edge relative to the photo cell is adjusted that we have to adjust perfectly. Okay. A further set of photo cell is used for this uh, to locate the edge of the yarn. So, we must locate the edge of the now how to locate the edge. So, that it is basically it gives the point like here the how to locate this edge it does this photo cell will locate where the density that light the density is very high that means light will not pass and after just beyond this edge light will start passing. Okay. So, that edge detection is done by a separate photo shell. Okay. This edge has it is important then only that uh, the reference this is ultimately this will be the reference point. So, beyond this reference point then it will start counting or measuring the length of the hairs and next uh, technique is that it is a Worcester tester. Worcester actually this is a 
an attachment with Worcester uh, evenness tester and one should not get confused that Worcester evenness tester that we will discuss later it works on capacitance principle, but as because it is attached with the Worcester evenness tester people may get confused that it is a it works on capacitance principle, because in capacitance principle we cannot measure the hairiness, because here the technique is that it is a again light principle, it is a it works on light scattering principle, but it is at an attachment, but it is independent instrument ok. Optional attachment of Worcester evenness tester, but the as the software is there in Worcester which gives a different types of characteristics like different types of curves uh, graphs like that uh, spectrogram, histogram or this type of different mass uh, variation diagram ok that is called diagram it is called. So, this type of uh, this is for the mass variation like uh, evenness and similar variability variation or similar curves we may get also for hairiness also. So, it works on IR light illumination ok and it is light scattering principle a parallel beam of IR light illuminates the yarn as it runs through the measuring head ok and the direct light is blocked from reaching the detector and that is important. So, if there is uh, no yarn suppose the yarn is absent the uh, instrument will show it is uh, nothing no, no light is coming ok. Only light that is scattered by hairs protruding from the main body of the yarn reaches the detector ok. So, light now this I will explain here suppose it is a a uh, light source is coming this is a light source ok. Now, and here we have something which is blocking this is block ok which is a uh, light stopping it is stop which blocks the light and somewhere here we have receptor light receiver ok. Now, in normal case there is no and yarn passes through this point this is the yarn path path of the yarn. Suppose there is no yarn in that case what will happen light will directly projected on this stop and light will never reach in the receiver ok. This is the receiver. So, this is this stop will actually stop the light. Now, after that what we are doing suppose this is one filament yarn or yarn with zero hairiness it is moving. Again what will happen this yarn will block light to some extent, but beyond that whatever light is passing this will be blocked again. So, in that case also nothing is reaching here no light is reaching here. So, that means it shows that the there is no hairs. In next case a yarn with hairiness. This hairiness is it is coming. Now, what will happen? This the yarn has got two portion, two distinct portion, one is its body, another is hairs. The body of the yarn core side of the yarn it is as good as the filament it will act as a filament. So, it will block the light a light will not pass, but the when the light will fall on this 
hairs, these hairs, okay. The hair when it is coming here, this hair will start actually scattering the light. Light will get scattered by these hairs. Okay, now, again the issue of the totality, I am drawing the cross section here. Here, this is the cross section. When the yarn is moving, suppose the light is this is the light. Okay. Now, light will scatter all the it will get scattered by the hairs which are coming on its way. Now, all this hair will come, but this hair may not come just opposite side and also this hair if it at all scattered this may be blocked again by the, the body. So, but whatever the amount of the light quantity of light it scattered it is definitely proportional to the, the number of hair, total length of the hair. Now, now the, the ear that this light is scattered throughout the by throughout the surface. So, this the total quantity of light it is scattering it is proportional to the, the length of the hair coming across the light source okay, light path of the light and this will get scattered and with the help of some, some this uh, lens arrangement this will get be actually taken away. Okay. So, this type of lens arrangement will be there and it this will again be converged here and it will fall on the the receiver. Okay. So, then the quantity of light the received by the receiver is proportional to the total length of hairs projected. So, here this is the transmitter which transmits the IR light and it is uh, through this uh, optical arrangement this is the parallel light is going and it is blocked by the this stop arrangement and this is the actually this is the stop arrangement here it is again it is a blocked by this arrangement. Now, this will be blocked when there is no yarn and when there is yarn with without any hairs, but as the hairiness is there. So, this hairiness will actually scatter the light, this scattered light will get again converged here and receiver will receive the light. Now, let us see the animation here. Now, this light is diverging light is coming and due to this lens arrangement, lens 1 it has become a parallel ray of light and first iteration is when there is no yarn and it will be it is a blocked by this blocker it is blocked here okay. no light is going to the receiver intensity of receiver i 2 is i 1 is 0. Now, again the yarn without any hairiness is coming it is like filament yarn when yarn moving with no hair. So, nothing will change okay. it is actually again the intensity of light here it is 0. So, it will show there is no hair 
now the yarn with hairiness is coming and now the light will start getting scattered by the hairs and this scattered light okay, will fall on this optical lens system lens 2 and then again it will be converged and it will fall. Now, this light the intensity of hair is I 3 is proportional to the, the length of the hair. Okay. What we are getting here we are not actually measuring the length, but we are getting a, an idea which is proportional to the that intensity which is proportional to the, the length of the hair. Okay. And this intensity how do we how are you getting the length? because it has been actually gauged from prior data this has been actually uh, gauged that uh, that that much intensity means this is the length of the hairs. Okay. So, the amount of scattered light is then measured it is a measure of hairiness it is converted to an electrical electric signal by an apparatus by the apparatus it is thus monitoring the total hairiness. Okay and the instrument gives a data which is known as the hairiness index that means total length of protruding fiber with a reference to with reference to the sensing length what is the sensing length of 1 centimeter of hair that is important total length of hair in centimeter divided by the length of yarn in centimeter. Okay. So, that is why this is dimensional less okay, centimeter by centimeter. Okay. That means, higher h value means higher length of hair protruding. Okay. So, h value of say 5 means in 1 centimeter yarn. So, say h value say h value of say 10 what does it mean? Suppose we are taking say 1 centimeter yarn, 1 centimeter yarn, and it is the if we take the total length of the hair, if we add together total length, it will become 10, 10 centimeter. So, 10 centimeter is the total length. So, higher H value means higher length of hair. So, as I have mentioned that it is its attachment with U T 3 Ooster tester hairiness evenness tester 3. So, it gives the hairiness evenness tester gives the di diagram mass variation here it gives the diagram of hairiness variation U T 3 gives the spectrogram of mass variation here it gives the spectrogram of hairiness and there U T 3 gives the mean value here also it is a mean value of hairiness similar to that of mass variation. Now, we will discuss the measurement of hairiness of fabrics. Okay. There are few uh, techniques the surface hairiness is uh, basically it is a indication it gets uh, higher the yarn hairiness that will result higher surface hairiness and it can be measured uh, by different uh, techniques one is that low compression uh, testing. Okay. Now, the fabric hairiness suppose we have two fabrics this is fabric 1 fabric core and and it has got hairiness these are the hairs on the surface. Another fabric suppose there is no hairiness. Now, how do we get the indication of hairiness in the fabric on the surface of the fabric? If we test the compressibility at low pressure, so the fabric with higher hairiness will give higher compressibility, but this fabric, fabric A will give higher compressibility and fabric B will give least compressibility, it will not be compressible. So, this by knowing the compressional value at low pressure will give idea about the presence of surface hair. It is called 
low pressure compression testing. Next is the laser counting of protruding fibers. It is a similar to that of the Ustar hairiness tester of yarn. It works on almost similar principle of light scattering principle and third one is modified audio pickup measurement which, which will give us the idea about the hairiness as well as it, it predicts the uh, prickliness of the uh, fabric okay, prickle sensation and this low pressure compression testing it is a Kawabata KESF 3 if we convert if we just modify. So, that will give us the indication of low pressure uh, testing okay. it is uh, the compression uh, meter we can test. So, applied pressure and fabric thickness data we can from there we can get when the bending of fiber protruding from the surface takes place during compression. So, that protruding fibers bending from that we can we can get idea about the presence of hairiness and this is the it is a laser hairiness meter it counts the fibers protruding from the fabric surface by laser beam this is the actually laser beam here and this one is the fabric okay and fabric coming from this point and it goes through the one edge okay knife edge type uh, system then it's a, it's winding up here okay now from there at this point at the tip point when it's a laser, uh, the light is coming it counts the number of hairs okay and from there one can count the hairs present the sensitivity of the instrument is adequate only for coarser and stiffer hair so that limitation of this instrument if it the hairs are coarser and stiffer it is projecting beyond the surface in straight fashion there is no bent and so in those case it can uh, the instrument uh, measures actually accurately the surface hairiness of fabric another technique is a modified audio pickup uh, technique which actually the result gives the idea about the prickle sensation of fabric okay it measures the mean force per contact with the protruding fiber so that will measure protruding fiber and that this technique may be the most effective measure of fabric uh, prickleness and the technique is the result obtained from this instrument correlates well with the subjective perception of fabric prickle which is directly related with the hairiness yarn hairiness or fabric hairiness and this is the schematic diagram of the instrument. Now, this is the fabric sample with protruding hairs it has got two sensors one is it is stationary audio stylus. So, this, uh, this is basically it is uh, it measures the the number of hairs here and the bending force the actually the hairs are projected and it measures the number as well as the the bending cantilever bending force of the hairs and normal load is uh, placed and here the buckling force of the hairs are measured okay the two measurements are there uh, simultaneously here now the fabric surface moved under stationary audio stylus so this is the audio stylus here, here and this the fabric moves in this fashion okay that's have been pulled from which the signals are obtained from the contact between the this point and the protruding fiber and this creates some sound and some perception is there and that will give us the idea about the stiffness of hair and also number of hairs all it will give some idea okay and in addition so two classical models are considered here one is that loaded cantilever model that is by the audio stylus model another is that it is a Euler column it is a buckling buckling force. So, buckling force is calculated 
So, bending force and critical buckling force they, they are calculated and that these are actually generated from the hairiness of a fabric surface which actually in turns coming from the yarn hairiness and this gives that the critical buckling force of the protruding fiber ends is responsible for stimulating the mechanoreceptors those are responsible for pain sensation that is a prickle sensation it gives idea and this is the model ok. Now, the principle is that this is a normal fiber and here is the bending force we can measure and also buckling force we can measure with this end. So, critical buckling force is actually given by the equation P E is the uh, buckling force and where E is the Young's modulus of the fiber. Now, so if the Young's modulus initial modulus of the fiber is high then it will create higher buckling force that means it will give the, um, the uh, prickle sensation. I is the moment of inertia that means it is proportional to the fourth order of diameter. So, so if the fiber diameter is more as we have uh, seen uh, discussed earlier also if the fiber diameter mo is more it will create hairs and if it is hair is created and it uh, with a more for more higher diameter it will give higher moment of inertia and the buckling force will be more and that means it will create the prickle sensation and also the length of the hair. Now, length here for prickle sensation the length of the hair if it is less then it will give us more uh, buckling force critical buckling force and that will actually in turn result prickle sensation ok. So, it is inversely proportional to the square of the length of the hair. So, I think we have uh, we have covered the um, hairiness of yarn and uh, uh, fabrics in detail here and we have uh, seen uh, various techniques of measurement and their implication in product final product and we will end the session here. Thank you.